Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, the bitch you channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. While I have your attention, I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and to tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, my merch store on Teespring, where I sell t-shirts, coffee mugs, towels, and hell, if I could put my logo and the URL on it, I sell it. And there's a place also on my website where you can support me further, and there are links to all of these in my description box below. My late father had something of a dark sense of humor that he obtained by being a psychologist for 50 years and having worked in diverse areas like state prisons and the security wing of a state mental hospital, which is where they send you if you're too dangerous and too crazy to be put into prison. And I recall in one particular instance where he mentioned that he was working with a patient who had torn the face off of his arresting officer. So we're talking some serious Hannibal Lecter style patients here. So he had a pretty dark sense of humor and kind of rubbed off on me. My father passed away a few years ago from COPD, which if you don't know means chronic uh, obstructive pulmonary disease. And in his case, it basically meant that he suffocated to death over a period of 10 years or so. And by the end, he was essentially an invalid, const constantly being fed oxygen through a tube. Shortly before his death, my father said to me that he never thought he'd live to see the end of the United States. And sharing his somewhat dark sense of humor, I said, well, maybe you'll get lucky and you won't. Well, he got the joke and he got lucky. He didn't live to see it. Also shortly before his death, my father reiterated to me the words of Edmund Burke, who famously said, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. I'm not a spiritual man or a religious one, but on occasion, I can feel my dad looking over my shoulder. So, Dad, this one's for you. This is me trying to be a good man who does something so that evil will not triumph. The UK Guardian reported recently that the Pentagon is now testing mass surveillance balloons across the United States. Specifically, the Guardian reports. The U.S. military is conducting wide area surveillance tests across six Midwest states using experimental high altitude balloons, documents filed with the FCC reveal. Up to 25 unmanned solar powered balloons are being launched from a rural South Dakota area and drifting 200 miles through an area spanning portions of Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, and Missouri before concluding in central Illinois. Traveling in the stratosphere at altitudes of up to 65,000 feet, the balloons are intended to, quote, provide a persistent surveillance system to locate and deter narcotics trafficking and homeland security threats, unquote, according to the filing made on behalf of the Sierra uh, Nevada Corporation and Aerospace and Defense Company. The balloons are carrying high-tech radars designed to simultaneously track any individual vehicles day or night through any kind of weather. The tests, which were not previously reported, received an FCC license to operate from mid-July until September following similar flights licensed last year. Now, for those of you who may not know, the name of this show, Tales from SYL Ranch, derives part of its name from my late grandparents' South Dakota cattle brand, the stylized SYL that you can see in that logo down there. Now, I was born in South Dakota, and I was lucky enough to spend two to four weeks every summer from age 5 to 15 on my grandparents' working cattle ranch before I went into a successful career in IT that spanned everywhere from Chicago to western South Dakota. I built some of the internet backbone that you're currently using with my own two hands. You're welcome. I still consider South Dakota my home state and tend to consider myself uh, a South Dakotan living abroad in Nebraska. I love South Dakota very much, probably as a result of spending so much time on my grandparents' cattle ranch. I am absolutely disgusted that these monstrosities were launched from South Dakota, and worse, they were endorsed by South Dakota Governor Christy Nome, who said through a spokesperson, quote, 
If the state of South Dakota can contribute in some small way to stopping the flow of drugs in our communities and country by hosting a balloon launch, we're proud to play a role. End quote. Governor Nome, you're an evil bitch. And my viewers know that I rarely use language such as that, but the reality is that Chris, Governor Kristi Noem is an evil bitch. And while I know that a lot of my viewers are conservatives, I'm going to call out your boy, President Donald Trump, because he either tacitly or intentionally approved of this. President Trump, you are an evil bastard. These balloons are the sort of thing that the old Soviet Union only ever dreamed of. We have allowed our politicians like President Trump and Governor Nome to turn the United States into something that the Soviet Union only dreamed of. If these balloons are successful, and they almost certainly will be, then our skies will be filled with them from sea to shining sea. They are capable of monitoring entire cities, and not just the small cities in Nebraska or South Dakota, but large cities, such as the Omaha metro area of 1 million, or Chicago's 2.7 million, or Los Angeles' 4 million, or New York's 8.6 million. These alt uh, balloons operate at altitudes of 65,000 feet. That's double the altitude of commercial jetliners and only 5,000 feet below the U-2 spy planes that were used to spy on the Soviet Union during the Cold War. That's just how evil these things are. And their only use can be to spy upon every American awake or asleep 24-7, 365. As in the George Orwell novel 1984, Big Brother, the United States federal government is watching your every movement. At the very least, these things are utterly unconstitutional by any sane reading of the document. They specifically violate the Fourth Amendment, which states the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue, but upon probable cause, su supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Obviously, clearly, and unequivocally, these surveillance balloons are in abject violation of the Fourth Amendment and an abomination to a free society. Governor Christy Nome and President Donald Trump are clearly nothing less than the would-be slaveholders and would-be tyrants of the 21st century, and every American watching me is one of their slaves. Now, what do we do about it? Well, frankly, aside from outright revolt, I don't know what you can do about it. America's spy machines, the unconstitutional FBI, the unconstitutional CIA, the unconstitutional NSA, and the unconstitutional DHS are clearly running the show. Do our elected representatives even have the power to stop them? Well, given that they can't even arrest James Comey, uber spy of the unconstitutional FBI, after he testified before the U.S. Senate that he leaked his notes to the press. And these notes were taken while he was director of the FBI, and then those notes, by definition, were property of the FBI, and at his level, some kind of top secret. Leaking such notes is an obvious violation of the Espionage Act, and probably outright treason. I was mollified that he wasn't arrested the moment that he testified. But since they can't even pull that off, it would seem that our elected officials don't have any real power or are approving of our unconstitutional spy agencies controlling our destinies. Our fates aren't governed by those who we elect, nor by ourselves. Our fates are governed by spies who have absolutely, and we have no control over them whatsoever. As my father feared, the United States, the great experiment in individual liberty, is now at an end. My father didn't have to live through it, but you, my children, and I do. The United States, the great experiment in individual liberty, is now at an end. 
destroyed by our many unconstitutional spying agencies. The spies now control your destiny, and you will either kowtow to their whims or wind up in jail, in Gitmo, or dead. I can think of only one recourse, but I dare not suggest it, or I'll wind up in jail, in Gitmo, or dead. The United States federal government, under all ten presidents of my lifetime, including President Donald J. Trump, and under the many senators and congressmen of my lifetime, including those from Nebraska and South Dakota, and the governors and governments of many states, under the governors and legislators of my lifetime, including Governor Christine Nome of South Dakota, have clearly become domestic enemies of the United States Constitution. Our elected representatives placed their hands on a Bible and swore to protect and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Yet those same representatives now spend every waking hour intentionally undermining and destroying the Constitution. Almost nothing they do is constitutional by any sane reading of that document. Our representatives are in gross violation of their oaths of office and are consequently traitors. This includes every single one of them with no exceptions, not even your favorite. Our elected representatives either lack the will or are afraid of the personal consequences should they destroy the unconstitutional spies that now control your destiny. Whatever they are makes little difference. They are in violation of their oaths of office and are consequently traitors. Now, I would assume that the oath of office or the oath that's taken by the members of our armed forces must at some point apply to the domestic enemies that our elected representatives have become. So I ask my friends and family currently in service and those who have mustered out, whom have all told me that being mustered out does not relieve them of their oath. Does your oath apply here? And if so, what are you going to do? about the domestic enemies that our rep elected representatives have become. If you believe that your oath applies, I would urge you to watch my video, Winning the Second American Revolution in a Week, and there's a link for it in my description box. And in it, I outline precisely how a second revolution can be waged and won in only a week. If you believe that your oath applies to this situation, I urge you to watch that video and use its ideas. If your oath applies, and you, if you use it traditionally, then it will mean blood running in the streets of every American city and town. It will pit brother against a brother, and father against son, and more people will die than did in the Civil War. But if you heed my video, winning the second American Revolution in a week, then all that needs to be done is to turn off the flow of food from the United States agricultural land to America's cities. And when they begin to feel the pangs of starvation after a week or less, then they will capitulate, and there will be little or no bloodshed. I can only remind you, as my father did, of the words of Edmund Burke. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. And that's all I have to say about that. I'd love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to get back to you. So thanks for watching, and that's all the time that we have today for this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYL Ranch, the BitChute channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.